Welcome to the Leadership Espresso podcast, inspiring next generation leaders about the future of leadership. And yet, uh, we still experience in many corporations, we still experience a limiting old paradigm, a leadership paradigm that says something like, you can either be successful and have a career or be human. And our guest Astrid uh, Schulte claims human is the next big thing. And she will unveil her secret about how to unfold the potential of all employees by being human. Astrid, I'm absolutely thrilled and so happy and grateful having you on the show. Uh, thank you for being with us. Thanks for having me, Stefan. Wonderful, Astrid. Let's jump right into it. You are the CEO and the co-owner of the Berenson Group. It's a major European player in the promotional items industry, and it's a traditional, a family-owned business that you and your team reinvented after you reinvented yourself. Now, Astrid, why do you believe it is so powerful to be human in business? Well, being human in business, I think, is um, to be kind to each other, to trust each other, and um, to give room for everyone and everyone's strength. And um, so I've also lived in cultures, as you also did, Stefan, where um, people were full of pressure, full of ego, full of fear. And uh, I felt, and this is my conviction, that if you lose so much energy in self-marketing, if you lose so much energy in protecting yourself from the ego from others, then it's really hard to find the energy to let the company grow and to let yourself grow. So uh, this is my conviction to be human is uh, to be a good leader. Absolutely agree. You know, we both worked in the consulting industry for many, many years. You know, you, you, know, you have an 80 hours week like most senior leaders, mm -hmm. they do. And whilst you're in the industry, you don't really notice what's happening, right? You're just successful, you, you uh, run projects, and you see the success, but you don't feel it. So what happened? Uh, what happened in your life that you took the turn? <laughs> well, many things happened. And uh, I mean, I... <laughs> Tell us some things about your life. Well, there's so many stories. <laughs> no, I try to make, it, to make it simple because I think every story is different. But my story is that... I was really ambitious when after my studies, I was really ambitious. I was so disciplined. I worked so hard and I made this really nice career. And I wasn't, I think I wasn't unhappy in my career, uh, but I also wasn't happy and I wasn't fulfilled because uh, it got further and further and the fast lane was long. And I mean, there were years for me where, where I was every morning in the plane and uh, I was uh, so under pressure and uh, finally I found out that I had lost a little bit the sense of what I am, what I want and um, so um, I was really lucky to get out of this kind of hard jobs um, by being pregnant. So strange <laughs> story because I know for many <laughs> Because I honestly, I didn't ask really myself, and I'm not proud of this, but I didn't ask myself when I was in this past lane, I didn't ask myself, is it really what I want? Is it really what I love? Is it this what I still want to do in 10 years? I just did it. And, and I, I found it fine. And uh, I worked so hard. And nevertheless, I found a man <laughs> who uh, wanted to marry me with 80 hours with 80 hours per week, it's not so easy. <laughs> because when you work 80 hours uh, per, uh, per week, you, you only can date like consultants and uh, you have to arrange like midnight, uh, midnight meetings <laughs> at any bar because there's no <laughs> to get to know someone. <laughs> but finally, I was, I was lucky to, um, uh, like, to, uh, to find a man I wanted to marry and finally I got pregnant and uh, so for me, getting pregnant was such a big chance also in my career life because for many women getting kids is really hard to combine with, uh, with a good career because you need more flexibility, you need more time, etc. And uh, finally, in my case, it was that um, I 
didn't really know when I was pregnant what uh, what to do. And I, I remember, I think, four weeks before um, before my first the daughter came, I had to present at Richemont in Paris a business plan. And I was really like, uh, I had a really big tummy. And so I was completely into this lifestyle. And then I moved to Hamburg and then I um, didn't really know what to do. And uh, I thought about perhaps I go to Roland Berger where I was before in, in the Hamburg office because before I lived in Munich, or I go to Richemont. And finally I met um, the four belly button partners. Um, they founded this company, um, lifestyle company for uh, cosmetic uh, products around kids and, and pregnant women. And I met them and I was really flashed and I thought, wow, this is a small company. and. Uh, the startup spirit I've sensed already at Payback, but I didn't really think myself that I could be an entrepreneur. And then I met this woman and they said, well, we need someone to, um, to be a new partner. We want someone to build the company. Um, we want someone to feel like us. Uh, we are human. We want to be human. We want a great culture in our company. Um, commercially, it didn't work so well. So uh, for me, it was like a chance. Oh, I just do it because I had nothing to lose. And so I became an entrepreneur at Belly Button, which uh, I did <laughs> and 15 years, and I really loved it. And it's the first time that I really felt how it's like to have a flow in work, how it's great to have a culture of trust. And finally, in my career before, I always had like a kind of problem with this. This is a game. The game is about push and the game is about ego. And I thought either you are like happy in your personal life or you are really successful. And I think there's no reason to select because we are all and we have to live all which is, uh, which is inside us. So I became entrepreneur and I loved it. And finally, um, yes, it went pretty well. Belly Button became a big brand and uh, we had a great partnership with uh, my four partners. And finally I took really the right decision that I wouldn't have taken it to be really true <laughs> without being pregnant. Yeah, because, yeah, absolutely. I mean, that means as I mean, it's it's clear before you earn a lot of money. Um, it's like I think I earned ten percent in the beginning. You know, being an entrepreneur means no no really no real money in the beginning. Or in my last job, I had someone, I had a lovely car, a huge car, and someone asked me every week, asked which shall I clean your car? <laughs> and at Belly Button, there was no car for me, and also um, there was no one who could potentially clean my car. So, you know, it's, I mean, it's a big shift and it took me a lot of, it would have taken me a lot of courage without being pregnant, but. Yeah. Um, let's hang out, after. let's hang yeah. out at this point. I think it's a critical one. And it's one that I would love to describe a little bit more in depth. So we as leaders uh, in the big, in the big corporations, you know, we, uh, we kind of feel always there is no choice. You know, we are in that system. You know, you can take any big corporation, BMW, Mercedes, BSF, Lufthansa, whoever. You know, the controlling systems that run these companies, they will put you into a prison kind of thing. And people believe that's the prison and I can only uh, kind of live in that prison by earning lots of bucks to to have a number of vacations or a nice car or a nice house to kind of uh, balance the suffering. Now, I guess it's very important to understand uh, it's a self-made choice and not the choice by staying, but by how do you feel about it and what are your options? Can you just a little bit elaborate about, you, you told it a game, you play a game so that we can understand we play a game. It's not the game that's played with us. Absolutely. I'm anyway convinced that uh, we're in the driver's seat of our life and everything is decided more or less by ourselves. And I think also every decision you take um, has a price. So finally, if you decide to be in a corporate organization and uh, to have a leadership, um, to, to have a leadership uh, role, then you have to pay a certain price. So I think you can change everything, but a certain price has to be paid. I think when you are in this uh, in this situation, but you always have negotiable aspects of this uh, of this price you have to pay. So it's not necessarily um, needed that you play the role as others do. 
for instance. You find your own way to play your role. You have to decide yourself. Is it, um, is it like the example of other managers being perhaps not human, which I take? Shall I be the same as others? Because I think you always have the choice to treat others in a different way. I think you always have the choice to trust or not to trust people. You always have to choice also how you lead yourself. And even though there is a certain frame also in corporate companies and you can change everything, but you can change so much and you always can change yourself. And uh, I think that, I mean, being human in business means also being human to yourself. You know, I mean, it's, uh, it's perhaps so easy to say be human to yourself and be human to others, but I really felt that I wasn't really human with myself, you know. I, um, what do you mean? What do you mean by being human? And what being is being human? human? I think being human to others, we talked already about it, but mm. being human to yourself means that you take time for yourself and you take time to know yourself and to, you take time to lead yourself and you regularly wonder, what do I really want? What do I want in life? What do I want in business? And to set objectives for yourself and then to say, okay, I'm able to go this way to achieve these objectives. I think it's unhuman to yourself if you don't ask these questions and you say, I'm in this rule, I'm a leader, I'm a manager, so I have to be neglecting myself, for instance. You should never really neglect yourself. And very often it's a matter of time. So many give the, the argument, so I don't have time for myself or I don't have time for my family. And finally, it's your choice. And certainly we all in jobs where we work hard. I also work hard now, but I work in a different way as I did uh, like 15 years ago. And no, you have the choice to work, yeah. I think, yeah. how you want to work. And exactly. if you say as a, as a leader, it's not every day possible, but if you say, I want to have dinner with my kids. Yesterday, last night, I heard the interview with, uh, with Barack Obama, which I really loved, and he said, Every night I had dinner with my kids when they were uh, in, in the US. So even the president of the United States can have dinner. <laughs> Why shouldn't we? And yeah. sometimes it's not possible, but it's a choice. And I think, um, uh, I think we, everyone should be aware of this choice we have. You know? And also, I think it's important that um, if you neglect your personal life and if you neglect what's in you, in, in terms of interests, in terms of passions, in terms of beliefs, if you just neglect this because you say, no, I have to work 15 hours per day, otherwise I can reach uh, my objectives, then it's wrong. Because I think if you neglect yourself too much, then you're just not happy and you're not fulfilled. And uh, for me, it took a long way to find this out. And I had really the occasion when I was pregnant, my kids were there and I had this lovely belly button partners being really completely dedicated to having a great culture in the company. So this for me was a, was a big, big um, luck and a big, um, yes, big uh, opportunity. So what you're saying is, um, as a leader, your perspective is a more holistic perspective. It's a perspective where you integrate every part of your life because you believe that on the long run, it's all about leading yourself before you lead others. Absolutely. So, so how, I think, mm, sorry. Mm, I guess um, um, this is very exciting. And I guess we have, uh, we have really uh, painted nicely uh, the, the questions that are necessary to shift, you know, so that we as leaders can kind of ask different questions. We may be successful now, but the question is not if we are successful, but if everyone around us is in the same team, if we as a team are successful, and if it's sustainable, it's not that we run 80 hours as a sprint. It's like more running a marathon of continuous unfolding potential. And I think, as I, as I knew it before, uh, as you just said, we need a second podcast because the second podcast should be about how will this translate into 
a different leadership style, a leadership approach by which you can create a massive long-term strategy, a different strategy that's more sustainable, that's more powerful, that comes more as a grassroots movement, that develops more the, the, the opportunities in companies. And, and I want to touch upon this one. So uh, promised, we do number two, uh, get more into depth how, about how this will work. How's that? Love to. Thanks, <laughs> So, Astrid, for now. Okay. Be inspired. What else? What else? <laughs> Let's fly.